All right, now, how about setting up floats on multiple objects inside your layout or inside your HTML page? So give me a second here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to toast my lorem ipsum text there, and I'm also going to toast the two rules that I had used in the previous exercise. And what I'm going to do here is, you know, I'm also going to toast the div that I have inside the body there. All right, so I'm basically stripped all the way back to just a plain old empty HTML page here. What I want to do here is I want to create four divs inside my, inside my page here, inside my layout. So inside the body area, I'm going to create a, a quick div here. Div ID equals open quote, and I'm going to call this uh, uh, box one, I think. All right, that looks good. Close the div. There we go. And you know what I'm going to do here is, you know what? I just, I'm, I'm going to change my mind. Uh, I'm changing my mind here. Instead of uh, ID equals box one, I'm going to change this to class equals box. Okay, bear with me here. All right. And I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to copy him and I'm going to paste him out four times. There we go. Something like that. Pretty basic, right? And again, I apologize if I'm zipping along too fast here. I'm just trying to sort of rock this out for you. Uh, I'm going to go and create a new class inside the internal style sheet called, you guessed it, box. Open squiggly bracket. Um, you know, I'm going to close my squiggly bracket too because I don't want to forget. And then I'm just going to back up one space. All right, let's see here. I'm going to do, uh, let's see, width. Let's do 100 pixels. Height, 100 pixels. And background, red, border. I should have kept that, <laughs> that previous rule that I deleted. Anyway, border one pixel, solid and black. And of course, actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to do a float just yet. Okay, cool. Is that cool with you? Hope that's working for you. Save it all up and go and check out your browser and we wind up getting something like this, right? So we have four boxes, four divs, all stacked sort of in a column, uh, all on top of one another. So with no float property, I'm really kind of reinforcing something I already said, but with no float property present, block level uh, elements, sorry, uh, sit on their own line, right? They all sit together on their own. I shouldn't say they sit together, I'm sorry. They sit alone on their own line. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so we have a column of blocks or divs. As soon as I introduce the float property, so I'm gonna, I'm now back inside the box class rule inside my HTML page. I'm gonna try and spell float, <laughs> full colon space, and I'm gonna say left, all right? Oops, followed by a semicolon, okay. Save this up flip over to the browser and refresh, and we now get a row of divs. So let me, I just want to back up because if you're not that comfortable with CSS just yet, I don't know where you are sort of in your comfort level with CSS and code and floats and all that junk. Here's the deal, is the box class rule is controlling all four divs, right? Are you with me on that? So all four divs are under the control of this class rule, hence why they are all exactly the same width, the same height, the same background color, the same border, and now the same float. So with the float left property applied, they all appear beside one another. They all kind of jumble up beside one another on the same row because this guy's floating to the left, so then this guy has to move up beside him, but then this guy's floating to the left, so the guy below him has to move up beside him, and because this guy's floating to the left, then this guy has to move up beside him. Does that make sense? Hopefully it's working for you. And of course, the same is going to hold true if I change the float left to float right. Save it up. Refresh the browser. Now we have all of our layout blocks, our divs, in my very simple example, now all sitting in a row over on the right-hand side. Hopefully that's all good for you. Now, what happens if you have a situation where there isn't enough room to display all of the 
the layout elements, in this case our, our div blocks or our div containers, what happens if there isn't enough room to show them all on one line? Well, give me a second to set that up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to float everything back over to the left like we had earlier. And I'm going to go and add on more divs into my layout. So I'm just going to do something like this. Just double the number of divs that I have and I'll refresh here. Now we have this mega row of divs here. And just so we can see things a little bit more clearly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw on some margin. You know that margin is the space on the outside of an object, right? Specifically, what I'm going to say is margin right. Margin right, five pixels. So what I want is my divs. So this guy here, for example, to have five pixels of space on his right side, and this guy here to have five pixels of space on his right side, and so on and so on all the way down, right? Okay. Now, if there isn't enough horizontal room for the floating divs or the floating elements to display, then what's going to happen is they're going to move down to the next available line. So the only way really that I can show you how this is going to work is if I take my browser window and collapse his width like this. So this is what's going to happen here. So in other words, if I had a smaller div sort of containing all of my, my red blocks, my red divs, and that was a part of my layout, this is what we'd wind up getting. Almost reminds me of like an image gallery or something. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. I'll show you that in a little while. But that's what's going to happen. So in other words, the divs are simply going to fall down to the next available line of space inside our layout. That's that's the deal there. So there you go. That's, again, it's, it's quick and it's down and dirty. That was sort of the intention behind this tutorial that I'm putting together here for you. But there you go. That's what happens when we apply the float property to multiple objects inside our layout.